Um, hold on, let me fix my boobies. Let me fix my tatas. No, but literally. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know when you first make the decision that you want to lose weight, it can actually be really overwhelming because you're thinking like, what do I do? Where do I start? What foods do I buy? What workouts do I do? Do I need to go to the gym? Do I not need to go to the gym? It's just, it is a lot to think about. I've said in my videos before that I learned everything I know really just through trial and error. So first things first, I think this is really, really important. That's why I'm saying it as the very first thing. Set realistic goals for yourself. When I first started losing weight, I really messed myself up trying to set just just crazy goals. Just like, I'm going to lose 5 pounds every week for the next month, and then I'm, that'll be 20 pounds. And I'm going to do that for 6 months. Like, that sounds so crazy. It's not even healthy to lose weight that fast. And honestly, I feel like when you set unrealistic goals for yourself, it's actually self-destructive. Or at least it was for me. Because I know when I will weigh myself and I wasn't five pounds lighter, I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> I ain't even make my weight this week. I'm about to just go eat what I want. And if it don't do that, that's horrible to do. That leads into my next point, which I know, like I sound like a dead horse saying this, I feel like, because I've said it in like every video I've made about my weight loss, but I always talk about how I allow myself to have cheat days, and even now I allow myself to have cheat days. I don't know about y'all, but I love junk food. I literally love hot Cheetos so much. There was a point in middle school where I see hot Cheetos every day, but I had to stop that because my friend got a stomach ulcer and scared the crap out of me. Like, like when I was really, really losing weight, I allowed myself one cheat day a week. The rest of the week I ate completely clean. Now that I'm in the point where I'm just really just living a healthy lifestyle, I, you know, if I see a little chocolate bar that I want to eat, I'm going to go, you know, I might, I might dabble in the chocolate. I dabble in chocolate in other areas. Why not dabble with a chocolate bar? You feel me? Like, it's whatever. <laughs> when you're losing weight, don't think of it as a diet. Honestly, you have to think of it as a lifestyle change because diets don't work and I know like this sounds so cliche because when I first started losing weight I was really on the other end like girl I don't want to hear that like tell me how I could just lose some weight and talking about change my lifestyle tell me how I'm supposed to lose this weight but it really is just about changing your lifestyle because what you don't want to happen is you don't want to put in all the work all this work for six seven eight months however long it takes you to lose the weight and then you go back to how you were eating and how you were living before and you gain it all back in two months when it took you six to lose it like that's irritating you don't want that to happen that's one of my biggest fears that's a whole nother video topic losing weight and maintaining a healthy lifestyle is 80 percent diet and 20 percent workout right as busy as i am I'm a full-time student i work part-time i have to do homework i do youtube you know, I try to maintain my social life, keep a good GPA, try not to pull my hair out. I make time for that one hour because it's important. And I feel like when you really make that decision to lose weight, you're making a decision to invest in yourself. It's like putting pennies in a piggy bank. Today, when I put my one penny in, it might not seem like a lot. But eventually, my piggy bank's going to be full. And that one hour every day makes a difference. I know it might not seem like it, but it does. And so whether that be going to the gym, going running, going walking, it just needs to be some type of physical activity. On the days that I know I can't make it to the gym, I literally wake up early and go for a run. And I did, I actually did that a lot because when I first started to lose weight, I didn't have a gym membership. So I really started my journey off just running, walking, whatever you want to call it. I don't still to this day i know i should my endurance should be up at this point but to this day i don't run straight through like i don't run three miles straight through but there's this app that i called and this is not sponsored at all but this is the app that i've been using for the last couple of years it's called goals fitness i don't know if you guys can see that it's at the bottom and it's in green and i'm gonna open it up and when you open it up it says choose an activity it gives you um a list you can be running walking nordic walking cycling mountain biking and it allows you to set goals for yourself each day so my goal when i go running i always do three miles just because um i can do three miles in under an hour 
and what I do after that is basically walk, stretch, whatever. When, when you first start losing weight, it's really smart to invest in a scale. I know not everyone has one. And when I first started to lose weight, I didn't have one. I actually didn't buy my first scale until like three months in. Weighing yourself once a week is a really good habit to develop. It feeds into the idea that you set a goal for yourself for that week. And then you see if you, you know, fulfilled it or if you need to do more work. I wouldn't suggest like weighing yourself more than once a week. And again, let me tell you why. I may, and maybe it's going to be okay for you, but just let me tell you what would happen for me. So throughout the day, we don't weigh the same. If you wake up straight in the morning with no food in your belly and you've slept or whatever, and the last time you ate was at 7 p.m. the night before, you're going to be really light. And then if you weigh yourself maybe at 4 p.m. after you've eaten and like done stuff throughout the day you're gonna weigh more and so what would happen is I would weigh myself every couple of days and I might be like a pound heavier or uh, two pounds heavier than I was the previous day and it would like really discourage me and I just I couldn't take like that would really just make me want to go haywire and just go binge eat like this was really toxic for me I don't know about y'all I feel like for me really easy to set me off and I think when you're first losing weight and you haven't really developed that confidence in yourself and you really your confidence is literally in the scale and literally in the numbers you it's just easy to be like F it and just I'm just gonna eat what I want and so you want to keep that as minimal as possible so something else that I think is really important is to keep busy throughout the day if you're like me and you like to eat that means that you eat for fun eating is so much fun and when I'm bored and I don't have anything to do whether I'm bored and happy or bored and sad I want to eat something and so it just became really important for me to make sure that my my time was filled because I just found I'm a very like I just like to eat eating is fun and if I had downtime where I wanted to eat I put some gum in my mouth and chew on that that way I wouldn't eat anything because <laughs> I need stuff in my mouth <laughs> and people are asking me questions it's like Mecca I live with people and I'm trying to lose weight and my family still buys the food that I love to eat girl boy you are preaching to the choir I have a little brother who did not care about the fact that I was trying to change my lifestyle I come from a family of people who love to eat and love to eat good food and when I say when I first started losing weight I think the hardest thing was like just living at home like I was good when I would go to my friend's house and I would regulate what I would eat when I would come home oh my god it likes to you know order pizza once a week she likes to make food we eat out a lot oh we're getting Chinese you want some oh, we're getting Mexican do you want some learning to say no to like my favorite foods was so hard oh my god like there was a couple of times I'm not even I'm just gonna be real where I got emotional because I felt like why is this happening to me I just want some pizza what would happen to me my, I would always come in late from work or from school or from something and my family would already have the food made already have out and then it's like you look at it and it's all on the counter to eat you could it's so easy to just go and grab it right so what I started doing is I really started meal prepping I started making sure I had healthy foods available on demand so that I didn't even have a chance to even think about whether I should put that pizza in my mouth or not I would have salad, I would have pre-made salads, pre-made veggies, pre-made, like everything that I ate for a while was pre-made. I even want to give myself time to second guess myself or even think about, do I want some pizza? Do I want a burrito? Do I want some Chinese? Because the answer is always going to be yes. Like, <laughs> it takes four weeks for you to see a difference. It takes eight weeks for your family and friends to see a difference. And it takes 12 weeks for strangers to see a difference. I beg to differ because I feel like once a week you should be taking a picture. You know what areas of our bodies bulge and sag and do whatever they do better than anyone else. And something I found is that when I took pictures once a week, 
I could see the difference. Even if anyone else couldn't see the difference, I could see the difference in my body. I could see that my stomach was flatter here, or my, my arms looked a little smaller, or their, my role had gone down. Like, it will become very apparent to you because you know your body. Pictures to me, not only do they serve as validation because, you know, if it's been a hard week and you put your pictures side by side, you can see a slight difference. That's going to motivate you to keep going. But then once you start looking at your pictures that were taken two, three, four weeks apart and you can really see the difference that's happening and the difference that the lifestyle changes are making, it's just going to motivate you to go harder. That is exactly what happened to me. I was just like, oh, look, girl, is my stomach flatter? Oh, yeah, bet I'm going to the gym right now. It's just... It's such positive reinforcement and I feel like when you're first losing weight and first making changes in your life, it can be really hard putting down the foods that you love and breaking bad habits and anything positive during that time is needed because like not to sound, not to be dramatic, but I feel like, I feel like making the decision like the first month when you're trying to lose weight can be a traumatic experience. You're stepping outside of your comfort zone and you're totally changing your life up in a way that you have never lived before. And that can be traumatic. And I know this sounds cliche because everyone says it, but drink water. Water is such an essential part of weight loss. I just, I can't stress it enough. I mean, if not for the weight loss, the, the good that it does for your body started to do was I would drink water before my meals with my meals after my meals because it made me feel really full. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like feeling stuffed. Feeling stuffed is a very uncomfortable feeling for me, but when I feel stuffed, it makes me not eat anything. And so I would just stuff myself with water. Now a side effect is that you literally go pee every five minutes. But I just feel like it's kind of worth it, you know? If I'm gonna be 20 pounds lighter, I guess I'll pee every five minutes. It's whatever. I'm not really tripping. And I've said this in my videos before. Is when it comes to your workout, I know that you like are gonna want to do just straight cardio because you're just gonna want to burn calories, and you're just gonna want to like. I just need to work out. I just need to sweat. I just need to burn calories. Okay, listen. I did that, and I'm dealing with the effects now. Now I'm not saying I'm not. Let me fix my titties again. I'm not saying I'm not cute, right? But I'm a little doughy, you feel me? I'm a little a little plush. A little bit on the soft side. I remind you of a Pillsbury Doughboy. You know, you like, you stick my stomach, you poke my stomach. I just, <laughs> just have a little, I do this is so soft. Like, I'm just like a tempur mattress, right? And I want to be more like a sleep number bed. Like, soft but firm. And so right now, I'm in the process. I've been lifting. I've been doing a lot more weight and strength training in the gym. And I just want to make it easier on you and tell you that you should do cardio but also do weight and strength training while you're in the gym just saying like when the moment you cut out carbs you start losing weight 10 times faster because at the end of the day eating bread your body is going to process that and turn it into sugar that's all it is though he's to eating tortilla eating pasta eating sandwich eating cereal eating shorty like i love breads Everyone loves bread. I even just like bread and butter because I'm just that fat. Both is because I didn't initially cut out carbs. But when I was trying to lose weight, I had cut them out completely for a minute there. And I saw the difference it made in how much weight I was losing and actually how fast I was losing the weight. I swear the first week that I didn't eat any bread, I dropped like, was it like I dropped like four pounds that week? Like something crazy that was just like, wow, it really does make the difference. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me in my comments. I do respond to you guys. Hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you in my next video.